There's no reason the nation of Africa cannot and should not join the ranks of the world's most prosperous nation in the near term, in the decades ahead. There's that simply no reason. In 2014, at the U.S.-Africa Leaders Summit, in front of a room of 50 world leaders, U.S. Vice President Joe Biden made the same mistake that many Singaporean students make in the exam hall year after year. So, it is more common of a mistake than you'd think, actually. French journalist Nicolas Kaiser-Brill was so frustrated about how many times his fellow journalists and politicians misrepresented Africa that he created a website, Africa isn't a country, to keep track. But it's just because it's common and doesn't make it right or fair to the 1 billion people who live in the 54 countries that make up the huge continent of Africa. So, isn't it about time we stop saying that Africa is a country? First, let's get some definitions out of the way. A continent is a continuous expanse of land, but a country is a nation with its own government occupying a particular territory. Africa is one of the largest continents in the world. It's second only to Asia. Its 54 independent countries have their own unique governments, histories, ethnicities, and cultures. Take Ghana. It's 17.6% Muslim. Official language? English. Guinea? It's 85% Muslim, and its official language is French. They are not the same. You would never assume Singapore is starving because North Korea has been hit by a famine, and that's because we recognize they are two completely different countries over 4,000 kilometers apart. So why do we assume South Africa is war-torn because terrorists attacked Somalia, which is also over 4,000 kilometers away as well? But why do so many of us keep talking about Africa as a country? One possible explanation is the inaccuracy of our world maps. You see, our world is a sphere, and spheres can't be represented on a flat plane without some level of distortion. So, all those flat maps we hang in our classrooms, they actually misrepresent the relative sizes of our continents. In 2010, computer graphics guru Kai Krauss created a map called the true size of Africa. He showed you could easily fit China, India, USA, and the whole of Western Europe into Africa and still have some space left over. If we grasped how huge Africa really is, we might be less likely to mistake it for a nation. So why is it such a big deal for us to stop saying Africa is a country? Because when we tell a smaller African story, we reveal the largeness of our prejudices. Too many of us tell only a single story of Africa's worst problems famines, violence, poverty, child soldiers, genocide. But nobody wants to be defined by just one story, let alone a story of their worst failures. Every country and continent wants their story to also be about their very best possibilities as well. It's really about fair representation. Parts of Africa do need help, but we must not talk about Africa as if it's a land of chaos incapable of helping itself because so many of her own people are already leading the change they want to see. It is estimated that the 30 million strong African diaspora living overseas remits back about 40 to 160 billion dollars every year back to their homeland. That's about the equivalent that the whole world gives Africa in foreign aid. Money remitted back is typically invested into education, home building and infrastructure. So, yes, Seven of the ten most unequal countries in the world are in Africa. But four of the ten fastest growing economies in the world are also in Africa. And it's true, there is political and economic suffering in Congo, Chad, and Central African Republic. But there is also strong governance, sustained growth, and social stability in Botswana, Ghana, and Senegal. One in three Africans today is now middle class, and it is one of the fastest growing markets in the world for mobile phones. On the cultural and intellectual front, Africa has produced 22 Nobel laureates from nine different nations. So Africans have made a winning mark on the world for peace, for literature, for sciences like chemistry, physics, and medicine. And you might be surprised to find out that it is the African nation of Rwanda that boasts the world's highest female representation in parliament at 64%. Ultimately, all of us, Africans, Asians, Europeans, we just want to be respected as fellow human beings and not be seen as stereotypes. In a 2009 TED Talk, Nigerian author Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie shared about how shocked she was that her American university roommate assumed she would not know how to operate a stove, speak English, or listen to Mariah Carey simply because she came from Africa. Adichie shared, 
She had felt sorry for me even before she saw me. My roommate had a single story of Africa, a single story of catastrophe. And in this single story, there was no possibility of Africans being similar to her in any way. No possibility of a connection as human equals. Aditya Wong, the consequence of the single story is this. It robs people of dignity. So, let's lay down our prejudices and not make a single story of Africa be the only story we tell about it. Thanks for watching. For more videos in our Stop Saying series, subscribe to our channel. And if you want to learn more about how the world works, click on the links below this video to get a free trial class at School of Thought or subscribe to our Broader Perspective magazine.